thank you especially woman of god and your husband and your team for all that you've been doing in order to move the church forward i want to say god knows exactly what is going on and um I see this very meeting as a very, very strategic one because from all indication, even from the things that are happening, it is a pointer to the fact that God is actually asking the church to arise. As we go on, I want to believe that um, he's going to build precept upon precept, we will see at the end of um, the three-day meeting that um, we would have had a holistic picture of what the Lord is doing. Shall we pray? King of glory, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We give you praise and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being called your sons. And we thank you, Father, for bringing us here at this time. Thank you for what you have for us. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we listen to your Holy Spirit and as you minister to us, the entrance of your word will bring light. It will bring understanding. It will empower us and strengthen us to go an extra mile in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you take full control as you have always been doing. Let Jesus be glorified. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. Thank you, Father, and let the blessings remain ours. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. The text says, uh, I'm, I'm just going to read the text from Revelation chapter 5, from verse 8 to 10, it says, Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth amen <laughs> Now, this is the word of the Lord. He had actually made us a kingdom of priests. And um, he also expects us to reign. But then, when you talk about reigning, there must be a reason why we are reigning. If everything is so quiet, everything is so um, um, peaceful, and everyone is just going about his or her own business, I wonder if there would be any need to reign or enforce rules, because it seems as if everyone would just be doing what is right, but it is not like that. Please permit me to read Haggai chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 6 to 7. It says, for this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. I'm reading the NLT version. In just a little while, I will again shake the heavens and the earth, the oceans and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and the treasures of all the nations will be brought to this temple. I will fill this place with glory, says the Lord of heaven's army. Brethren, we can all see that there is a shaking. The shaking is going on all over the earth. It is not just in one place. It is a shaking that has been orchestrated by God himself. 
because he also wants the church to rise up and to awaken. If this shaking does not take place, we will still sit down, not really knowing what to do. If we remember what happened in Acts of Apostles in chapter, in, in, uh, chapter 8, a shaking came to the church and they were all scattered. And of course, the gospel had to move to so many other places that they never even thought they could reach because of that shaking. Well, the shaking is oftentimes not palatable, but however, when it comes, we must be able to discern with the eye of the spirit what the Lord himself is doing. And of course, even as this shaking is taking place, there will be provision because he said gold and silver belongs to him. But at the end of the day, the glory of the latter shall surely be greater than the former. Praise the Lord. So he's shaking, shaking both the heavens and the earth. Well, apart from that, brethren, apart from this shaking that I've just mentioned, this is a very, very significant year. If we look at the Hebraic calendar, it is, called, it is the year 5781. And this is the year of strong words. That 81 simply means strong open mouth. That means that this very year, this Hebraic year that has just started, will witness a lot of strong words going forth. When we say strong words, we're not talking of abusive words. We're talking of words with power. We're talking of words that carry prophetic grace. We're talking of words that we turn things around. We're talking of words that will accomplish purposes. Because remember, God will not do a thing until he reveals it to his prophets. Well, let me just mention a little that um, when even there are times when the laymen say certain things, they don't even know why they are saying it. That very slogan, Sorosoke, that came up in Nigeria also means speak up. It is the signature of the year that we are in. They may not even know because it is easy for people to pick up things in the spirit realm without actually knowing the implication of what they are saying. People could easily trace it to Proverbs 31 verse nine, where it says, speak up for the poor and helpless, and see that they get justice. Well, yes, but what I want us to know is that as a church, we cannot afford to be quiet anymore. Whatever, the, whatever God is doing is also part of what he is trying to accomplish in his end time plan. Brethren, the wind, a strong wind is blowing, a strong wind. I just want us to note that a strong wind is blowing. And at the end of the day, the wind becomes so strong that it will create a path and create a pathway for you and I that will lead to the parting of our Red Seas. So let us be fully aware and let us be prepared for what the Lord is, is doing. If we look, these shakings are going on in some very, very strategic nations, which I just want to mention, you know, like in America, 
in the Northern Hemisphere, in, in Brazil, in UK, in Russia, in China. And all of a sudden, Africa that had been so quiet, all of a sudden, the nation that happens to be the trigger point in Africa sparked up. Do you know, do you realize that this happened exactly after the Feast of Tabernacle? God is saying something. Just after the Feast of Tabernacle, there was a sparking up of fire in order to destroy the idols of the fathers. Well, you may say, oh, whatever it is that is going on is maybe peculiar to Nigeria. But I want you to know that that battle is not only for Nigeria. It is actually a battle that is being fought, you know, for more or less the whole of Africa against oppression and injustice. And before, and it is because she's at the trigger point, that is why it is happening there. Well, in this month, we can see that this is the time that Gideon destroyed the idols of the fathers. So don't be surprised. It is the time Gideon destroyed the idols of the fathers. And we should also know that even though this battle is fierce, it is going to be fought by angelic inter interventions. That's why we as a church must have to rise up in order to pray and be empowered in order to take um, the, uh, God's word to the uttermost part of the earth. And I also want us to note that it took place at the gate. That place is called the toll gate though. Well, these people, these young ones who hooked themselves up in prayers during the day, they had a prayer walk all through the nation, but at night the enemy struck because they are the sons of darkness. Brethren, it does not call for fear at all. That is the reason why we must be able to prophetically design what is happening. And the Lord will give us more understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want us to know that the enemy will resist what is happening. We have even seen a little bit of what he wanted to do. Look at the airwaves. He, he was just trying to distort it in order to discourage us. But we will not be discouraged mm -hmm. because we know that these, our timings, are very, very significant timings. Well, as I said earlier, brethren, the strong winds are blowing and it will definitely cause our paths to open. Church, let us get ready for the opening of our path, the opening of the Red Sea. We will walk through dry land to the other side where we will meet with God. Amen. Some of us are involved in prophetic prayer works. Some of us are involved in prophetic declarations. Some of us have received grace to reclaim cities, to reclaim territories, to reclaim kingdoms. We will see more positive results as we go on because this is a special year. It is a special year of declarations and you cannot afford to keep your mouth shut. Praise the Lord. You and I cannot afford to do what? Keep our mouth shut because he has, it has been declared as a year of the open mouth we will just have to keep Talk, uh, declaring. 
Even the Lord himself will give us some leadings. He will tell us to go to certain places. All he requires from us is just to talk and why he will do the work. You remember he said in his word, Isaiah 62, I'm reading from verse 6 to 10. He said, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not be silent. Give him no rest until he establishes. And he makes Jerusalem a praise on the earth. He said, the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. I want us to note that. He, the right hand of the Lord, the arm of his strength. He said, surely I will no longer give your grain as food to your enemies and the sons of strangers or foreigners shall not drink the new wine for which you have labored. But those who have gathered it will eat it and praise the Lord. And those who have bought it together shall drink it in my holy courts. Then he said, go through we will surely go through in Jesus' name. He said, go through. Go through the gates. Brethren, we can't afford to stay back. We, we have to take the battle to the gates and then go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. There are so many riding on our backs, so to say. Even there are challenges you are going through on your own, I just want you to know that it is not for you alone, but probably God is using you to pave way for a people, for a, a generation, for a, a people group. So don't be discouraged. You will go through the gates. You will prepare the way for the people. We will build up. We will build up the highway of our God, which is the highway of holiness. We will take out the stones and lift up the banner for the people in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, little wonder. God now says, arise. Why is God asking us to arise? The kings and the priests. Why, is, why did God need to say, arise? If God will say, arise, it means that there is complacency. There is deception. There is liturgy. There is maybe disobedience or even the distortion of his words. If all these things are still in place, there will be the need to arise. And that's why we are arising. Amen. We will arise by the grace of the Lord and by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In order for us to be able to arise, these are the major areas that the Lord laid on my heart that I'm about to share. He said, in order for us to arise, the first thing to do is repentance. That we will repent and repent truly. We will have to repent. You remember when Samuel took the children of Israel to Mizpah? And the Bible says they, they, they all gathered together. He told them to return back to God and they drew water. When he took them to Mizpah, Israel had to repent in 1 Samuel 7. You can read it on your own from verse 3 to 6. There is need, brethren, for a cry to God in repentance. I'm not talking about, oh, Father, I repent, I repent, just forgive me and that is it. When we repent and we repent genuinely, there will be restitution. We will turn our back to that which is not good. We will not repent. We will not repeat it. There are those who claim to repent, but they still end up doing the same thing because they have not seen 
what it really means to repent. God is calling out for genuine repentance. Jeremiah 25, verse six and, uh, 5 and 6 says, Repent now, everyone, of his own evil and his evil doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. Do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them. Do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, and I will not harm you. God is telling us to repent and repent genuinely. And when we do that, brethren, we will receive courage to rise up because he's calling us to rise up. We will also be able to listen more to him, to know him more, what he can do and what he has purposed to do in this very season. And at the same time, when we repent and repent genuinely to step out in faith, step forward, even as the disciples did. We, by doing that, we will be able to accomplish much for God. When we repent, we will have faith to believe in his leading and we will have the ability to walk in his power. May the Lord help us in Jesus' mighty name. Repentance is very, very vital, brethren. If we don't address this issue, and the second point that I'm just about going to mention again, we will discover that we haven't really started. It will just be like going round in circle. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. The second thing, you know, I said the first thing is that we should repent. Secondly, God is asking you and I to develop a throne room ministry. Every one of us, a throne room ministry. This is God's heart cry and desire for us all. As we prepare for this end time harvest and as we receive strategies to solve our present day challenges, God is asking you and I to prepare to develop a throne room ministry. You remember he said in Revelation 5, 9 to 10, we are redeemed to God by his blood. He has made us a kingdom of priests to our God. We shall reign with him. This is what he had desired for his people when he met with them at Mount Sinai. I thank God we read that scripture. It is right there in my notes. He said, you know, when, he, when they were in Mount Sinai, in Exodus chapter 19, verse um, 5 to 6, the Bible says from verse 5, it says, now therefore, if you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all the people and all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Brethren, he had said this long ago, even when they met with him in Mount Sinai, he wants us to be a kingdom of priests who will reign on earth. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will surely reign. But before he said that, the Bible says he brought them to himself. God will need to bring us to himself. He brought them to himself and then he gave them this promise. Our reign on earth starts with our priesthood. 
And our priesthood also starts with our throne room experience. Our throne room, ability to get closer to God and to be in God's presence wherever we are. Only complete consecration will attract God's great blessings and great power. We want this power. You and I want it. But we should be willing and ready to allow him to prepare us for it. He brought them to himself. Jesus said, let's quickly look at Matthew 20. Three, Matthew 23, verse 37. Jesus himself said he desired to incubate us as a hen will incubate her chick. He said, but you're not willing. In that scripture, it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather you, gather your children together as a hen gathers her chick under her wings, but you're not willing. I pray that we will be willing in Jesus' name because that incubation is necessary. You know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That incubation, my, my brethren, is very, very important. We cannot afford to do without it. Praise the Lord. That incubation is necessary. Many of us are struggling with this, our throne room experience. Even as God is giving us more understanding that we need to draw closer, we need to draw closer but some of us are struggling. Some are still not even willing to go far. You remember what Israel said to God by the feet of the mountain. They said, oh, Moses, you go. You go and listen to God. Come and tell us what he has said. These are the people who worshiped afar off. This will not be our portion in Jesus' name. I'm talking about drawing closer to the Lord. I'm talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to help us to develop our throne room ministry. What does it also, you see, I am not talking about an experience that we try to access through maybe some teachings. We just go through some teachings and we feel we are there, no. I'm not even talking about the ones we read from books. I'm not talking about the ones we have watched other people do, but I am talking about a lifestyle. Praise the Lord. A lifestyle that we come through divine encounter and impartation of the Holy Spirit. An encounter. It comes with a price, brethren. The Holy Spirit is not a cheap person. It comes with a price. And we will be willing to pay the price as he walks us through it. I'm talking about a lifestyle. I'm talking about something that will come from within us. Not what we have read. Not what somebody else said but we have to make ourselves available to him so that he will work this out for us. If we choose all other methods, it will only work for a while. But if we allow him to do it, we will abide in him without effort because he will be at the center of our lives. Jesus himself also had this throne room experience and little wonder we saw him walk and walk in great power he only did what the father said he was always willing to do his will he was led by the father 
he could say concerning the devil, the prince of this world comes and he finds nothing in me. And we could see that even before he went to the cross, brethren, before I get Simone, he, 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 he slugged it out on his knees. And God had to send his angels to strengthen him. No one can grow in God beyond his or her prayer life. Just note that. The level of God's power in us is determined by the level of intimacy we have with him and the, the, uh, our willingness to allow his word to work in us. Brethren, this is something you and I must have to go out of our way to allow the Lord to work in us. I sat with a scripture. And I actually wanted to know the reason why Mo, uh, David said this. You see, David had a good understanding of his work with God. He cherished God's leading, and of course, he ascribed glory to him. Let's quickly go to Psalm 27. I want us to look at verse 4. Psalm 27. I want us to look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek. Ah, ah. David sought this very thing. It was his great desire. He said that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And I said, Lord, I just want you to piece this scripture. Why? Why should it be his desire? But I know that God did mighty things through David. God did outstanding things through David. But this is his desire. And this is also what he sought after. The Bible tells us, he himself said, I want to behold your beauty. That means he wanted to have, he wanted to have an experience that is beyond the normal. He wanted to have an ability to see beyond the physical. He also wanted to see the light of God that is piercing through the darkness around him. He said, I want to behold your beauty. Brethren, when I looked up that word beauty, it means he wanted to behold the kindness of the Lord. He wanted to see God's pleasantness. He wanted to see how delightful God is. He wanted to behold the favor of God, the splendor, and that this God that I'm serving is a perfect father. He wanted to see what it is to acquire the grace of God. And then, of course, he also knew that he wanted to behold God's vessels with all the weapons and the instruments and the jewels and the armor of God that God possessed and that all these things will be shining upon his own face. When we say we behold, that means those things are shining upon us. Then I knew the reason why David wanted it. Because if you are going to war and you don't even know what you have, you don't know the equipment you have, you don't know this very person that you are serving. You don't even know that, I mean, of how much he's willing to, um, to back you up. You will not be able to do justice to that battle. You will think that, oh, I don't even know what will come out of this. But David spent quality time beholding his beauty the beauty of the Lord. 
beholding the pleasantness of the Lord, beholding the weapons that has been made available, the jewels, those things that are with in the presence of God, the armor of God, he saw them clearly. Then he received the enough strength, grace and power to press on because he knew that his God is on his side and he has his back. No soldier goes to war without knowing that he has the right ammunition. He has the things that he will use. And of course, no king will reign without subjects. Brethren, when we behold and we see all these things shining upon us, as we inquire before the Lord, he will release and reveal to us the treasures of the kingdom. And at the end of the day, when we get up to go, we will go in strength. We will go with confidence that he is with us. We will go with the assurance that he is backing us up. You remember Jesus himself said, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Praise the Lord. Remember, brethren, that the Bible says the secret that is the intimacy and the counsel of the Lord is with those who fear him. How then can these things be done? Of course, we keep praying. We will still worship. We will still exercise our faith and endeavor to walk in holiness. But brethren, we need to walk on our heart condition, which is, which we all really, really need to walk upon. Because whatever we're going to do with God must have to flow out of love for him out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. I'm talking of faith that cannot be denied, brethren. I'm talking of faith that will take the promise. And I'm also talking of faith that will believe the word of God. If we settle this with God, Allowing him to walk upon us, allowing him to walk upon our lives and bringing us to that place of brokenness so that whatever God says is what we will do, then we will walk in authority. God will not commit power into the hands of those who are disobedient. He will not commit his power into the hands of those who are not matured because he knows they can bungle it. You cannot carry a gun to give to a little child. You know he can easily wound himself or he can just use it to kill anybody. That is why God is bringing us back into the closet with him in order to mature us and walk upon our lives so that by the time we go, we will go in his power to do his biddings and to do his will in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. The Bible also tells us, you know, brethren, as I said earlier, priesthood will, pre pre uh, will precede our walk in authority. Now, when God has fully prepared us, amen, then we will now begin to be conscious of this word that David spoke in Psalm 110, in from verse 1 to 5. It says, and I read, The Lord said to my God, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Amen. The rod of his strength out of Zion rule in the midst of your enemies. 
The only way we can really know that we are kings is when we are able to rule even in the midst of challenges. Rule in the midst of your enemies. And he will send this rod of strength out of Zion, out of the church. Those who will rule will definitely come out of Zion. He says, your people will be volunteers in the days of your power. These are the days of God's power. These are the days we are waiting for. These are the days that he had proclaimed in his word. He said, the people shall be volunteers. That means the people shall be willing. There will be willingness, but it will be done in the beauty of holiness. And then he said, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. He said, the Lord himself has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Brethren, as kings, we have to walk in dominion through the finished work. We have to walk in power and in faith subduing kingdoms, walking righteousness, obtaining the promise, shouting down the mouth of the lion, quenching the violence of fire. Even we will escape the edge of the sword. We will be made strong even in our weaknesses. We will become valiant in battle and we will turn to fight the armies of the aliens, all, all through the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. The things you will go through will also prepare you for this timing. And I pray in the name of Jesus, each and every one of us will rise up and each and every one of us will do the great and awesome thing that God himself has ordained for us in the name of Jesus. As we go through, we go through the gates. And as we take the battles to the gates of the enemy, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord himself is the one who will go ahead of us. As the Bible tells us in Micah chapter 2. He will be at the head of the battle. He will be with us. He will take us through as we break through territories in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, this timing does not call for fear. We will not fear because God's power will be released. The grace to overcome the powers of darkness has already been given to us. And greater grace and greater blessings is coming our way in Jesus' mighty name. Remember that in Daniel, the Bible says, it is the people who know their God that shall be strong. And they shall carry out great exploits. And though of the people who understand shall instruct many. Please, brethren, get to know your God. Know what he has made available and know what he has, uh, he has already given to us. And then let us allow the Holy Spirit to teach us how to make use of it so that when we go to battle, we will not bungle it in Jesus' mighty name. It is true that these are trying times, but we must not be distracted by the storm. Praise the Lord. We must not be distracted. We must fix our eyes on the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's stay on the Lord's side under his anointing and within the bloodline. If we stay within the bloodline, we are covered. Amen. If we stay within the bloodline, we are covered. 
but we become captives if we turn away from God and if we do not allow God to order our lives. This is not the time, this is not the time to say, oh, Father, this is what I want to do. No, the leadings must have to come from him. The directions must have to be shown by him. When he says go, we go. When he says sit, we sit. When he says stand, we stand. This is where God is taking us because he, these are the people that he will commit his power into their hands. And that is why he's asking us to come closer so that we can gain a one-on-one -on -one attention with him and he can prepare us even for the task that is ahead of us. I want us to know, brethren, that at this very time, even as kings are rising, I want you to know and to realize that you will be part of them when you also decide with all your heart to be fully committed to God and to submit to him wholeheartedly. I pray that the Lord will work this out in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. There are territories to take. There are so many things that is going on around us that are crying for solutions. The solution must have to come from the church. Probably the Ahabs are no longer going to do this. It is the young leaders that we count. We are part of the team in the mighty name of Jesus. Church, God is saying, arise. Let the kings arise. Let the priests arise. Let us sharpen our instruments before him. Let us anoint our shields. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us anoint our shields as we get ready to receive the prophetic word from the Lord and to be empowered to take territories for him in Jesus' mighty name. You and I cannot afford to keep quiet anymore. We have to open our mouth wherever we are. It is not every one of us that we go out there. Even right there in our homes, we can still be at the battlefield with the Lord, backing those who are on the front lines. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. I want to encourage each and every one of you, don't be discouraged for any reason at this time. There are times when we look around, we may see so many challenging things that may bring discouragement. When we look down, we allow our faces to look down, we become so timid. And we will not even be able to raise our head. But when we look up to the author and the finisher of our faith, we will come out strong, empowered, strengthened in order to press on in him. I pray that whatever it is that, that you're going through, that the Lord himself will open your eyes of understanding in order for you to know that you are not only fighting this battle for yourself, but you are fighting it for a generation. And you will also prevail in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lock our hands together in prayer. Let's lock our hands together with our armor. And let us press on in the name of the Lord in order to fulfill his divine mandate for this timing in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I just want us to pray right now. Remember I said, stay within the bloodline. If we step out of it, 
we will be in trouble. But God will keep us in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord himself will continue to strengthen us. And I pray in Jesus' name that every one of us will be anointed afresh. And that as you open your mouth to declare, just like it was said concerning Samuel, the word of the Lord in your mouth will not fall to the ground. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will speak as God's oracle. You will declare the mysteries of the kingdom and you will take territories for the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. God himself will empower us and continue to empower us. Stay in his presence. Behold his beauty. Enquire at his temple and take territories for him in Jesus' name. I, I just want to lead us in prayer. I want us to pray. I want us to unmute our minds that kings will rise up with authority and God will raise more prophetic voices mm -hmm. to lift a banner for the people. Mm -hmm. God will raise more prophetic voices. I want us to pray in the mighty name of Jesus that kings, God will, kings will arise with authority. Do you realize, brethren, that it is not that it is just coming? No, it is there already. And that this praise will be activated. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Yes. Shall we pray? that kings will rise up with authority yes. and that God will raise more prophetic voices in the nations. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will cause kings to arise at this time and that you will raise more prophetic voices for the nations. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying, oh Father, you will do a new thing in our own timing and that we will rule and reign with you in the name of Jesus. Pray, Lord, this is the day of your power. We will be willing, oh Father, even as you have in the name of Jesus, let more rise up. The prophetic yes, be raised yes, in the nation. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let us to pray again. Brethren, this throne room experience cannot be developed overnight. We want to cry to the Holy Spirit to help us. I want to see as you see. I want to hear as you speak. I want to uh, I, I, I want to speak as you will also speak. I want to see things the way you see it. I need this throne room experience. Shall we cry in Jesus request? I have two other prayer requests. I want us to pray that the power of oppression will be broken over the nations. Yes. I just want us to pray. And we will use the Nigerian experience as a point of yes. contact. Let the power of oppression be broken over the nations, that the true voices of God may come forth. The power of oppression, let it be broken. Yes. And we pray in Jesus' name. Prayer point for amen. I want to take a prayer point for Wales. My son shared with me, he saw Wales like a boiling pot and the steam just kept on coming forth from Wales. Well, it's part of the British Isles. And then the, the steam was just coming forth and coming forth and my heart also resonates with that. And I just want us to take a prayer point concerning this. And I sent a major revival is going to break forth, even yes. from Wales again. Amen. In the name Lord. of Jesus. Amen. And that boiling pot 
was just yes, seeming. It was yes. just seeming. We're going to pray that Father, let that fire fiber be kindled and let it spread over the entire British Isles and from there to other nations of the earth. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? And stay strong as kings. Stay strong as his priests. Don't be moved by what is going on. Remember that the Lord is seated upon the floor. Yes. And he is seated as king forever. All God's plan is still going on step by step. Even if we see battles going on in many places, just know that at the end of the day, there shall be angelic intervention and the sword of Gideon will win the battle in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be a total turnaround and you and I will raise up our head as the sons of the true and living God yes. in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Stay strong in your closet and stay strong as kings in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Amen.